What's happening, people? Back with another reaction, back with some more Thomas Dolby. And we're going back to his Flat Earth album, 1984, and we're up to the title track. So I wonder how we might make use of this concept, um, which, you know, historically, going back in different cultures, um, was often, not always, but often the standard view that Earth must be flat, and ultimately, um, in some cases, uh, through scientific endeavor, in other cases, through their own cultural paradigms, but increasingly, the notion that the Earth is round uh, began to take hold. There are holdouts. I mentioned, I think, when I started reacting to this album, that there's a bad religion tune called The Flat Earth Society. Um, but yeah, ultimately, I wonder if it might be more cheeky and sort of lighthearted, not, you know, a, a cultural or historical examination of that concept or the evolution of understanding of Earth. Either way, I'm curious uh, what might be a play. I would expect there to be uh, funky sonics. That's something that, you know, not only um, being relatively unfamiliar with Dolby's material outside of She Blinded Me with Science going into the steep dive, um, that is something that I've learned that, you know, the funk in that song was not accidental. What I have come to discover is that his work is a lot more experimental, original, and dynamic. Um, you know, it's, it's not cookie cutter at all. It's never just, you know, intro, verse, chorus, verse, chorus, outro. Like, it's never as simple as all that. And even the parts themselves, the verses, the chorus, there's often a lot of lyrics, a lot of words. <clears throat> and meetings going around as well as a number of sonics which you know either have a like really quirky rhythmic scheme or are otherwise um, you know an interesting blend of different elements so let's find out what this one is all about this is Thomas Dolby the track is the flat earth and it's the title track of the album of the same name 1984 <laughs> Thank you. 
rhythmic, but eccentrically rhythm. maybe the best vocals I've heard from him, or at least they stood out the most. I, like, it's not that his vocals haven't sounded good up to this point, but that one, it felt like there was more soul in it. There was more, like, emphasis on certain lines, whereas, you know, in some other songs, he's been, like, rapid-firing through, like, thick amounts of text. Um, so that one was really interesting in that regard. Secondarily, it sounded like there was a female, like, um, supporting vocalist, at least at the beginning of the tune. Um, maybe it was just, you know, um, multiple layered of Dolby's voices, but um, that's what it sounded like. Again, the synth work, it was giving me Vangelis vibes. It had this, you know, sort of c like smooth cosmic atmosphere. But a lot of the sonics, and especially in the chorus, they gave me like African music stylings, like some of the, um, that like guitar run in particular, some of the vocal work and the like, um, sort of overlapping vocals, so I don't know if that was delivered, but the essence of what I did catch, and you know, there's some lines I caught where, you know, I caught them in part, some other lines where I thought I heard it clearly, the one about like, was it spilling my demon seed, where it's like, I'm not quite sure how to take that, but it did sound like he was saying the earth can be any shape you want it to be, and what was it about like, something about like, having the, what was it, something about having the earth in your hand, in the palm of your hand, meaning like, you know, what happens next is up to your own agency, and you know, that could be, again, building off the idea that the earth is yours to mold, yours to make something with. Um, so either way, I'm not quite sure what's happening, but I was intrigued by um, the bits and pieces I did here. So really cool tune. Again, you know, I keep saying it, and I feel like, you know, I don't want to just like repeat the same thing every time, but this time, what occurred to me when thinking about like wow like no one makes music like this is it like you know there's some bands I'm going through Roxy Music and Japan are the two that come to mind where I've said it multiple times there are some other individual artists Kate Bush I have said this a few times but like you know there's literally like no one else like making music like this they're in it's not just their own lane it's like they're in their own like galaxy uh, and Dolby does feel like that and I like when I was listening to this tune, it was just like reminding me of the way in which, you know, if Japan or Roxy Music were a single person, I feel like, you know, it might be someone like Dolby, not in terms of the specifics of the Sonics, but in terms of like being audacious, trying things that are not like necessarily guaranteed to make a nice and tidy pop song, but are crazy, funky, like um, exploratory. Like he just feels like he was making music 
um, to be creative. And that's not to say that any of the other artists, including those that make nice and tidy pop tunes, you know, that can be very creative and that can be a testament to like musical skill and understanding. Um, but definitely it seems like Dolby was keen to, you know, forge his own path. So again, I try to think like if I do end up saying something like that, I'll try to keep thinking of new ways to say it because I really don't want to sound like a skipping record, which is to say that common expression, you sound like a broken record. Well, if it's broken, it's probably not going to rotate or like, you know, it depends on the way it's cracked or whatever. But generally speaking, broken records don't play. Uh, skip records play, but they can't get past a particular part. Um, hence the the more appropriate to my mind phrase. But I guess we don't get to choose idioms when you, you know, are born in the uh, late 20th century. I don't know what I'm talking about at any point, but uh, we'll listen to Dolby again soon. I'll try not to let it go as long as it did the last time. There, there was a couple times where I was meaning to get to it, and I just didn't get around to it. So um, I do apologize for the gap, but we will try to get back to it more rapidly the next time. Uh, shout out to Han Solo once again for sharing the Dolby material. Highly appreciate it. Let me know what you think. I'll see you next time. Peace.